Hello everyone, welcome to my watercolor painting channel and today we're gonna paint Queen's fruits in vintage style using watercolor. Download my line drawing following the link in the description below this video. Make yourself a big cup of tea because it's going to be a long tutorial and let's start! You can print out the line drawing and using window and light transfer it onto good quality watercolor paper. I'm using here 300 GSM Arches cold press paper. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon where I upload watercolor tutorial lessons weekly. Join me and become my student. So we will start painting with fruits first. For the first layer I've used cadmium yellow and a dash of lemon hue and also just a little bit of uh, yellow oak. So using my brush number 4 from Pro Arte, I'm starting on the left side of my queens and I'm starting wet on dry so this fruit is dry uh, the paper is dry and I am uh, using my brush and quite a lot of water and a very diluted paint on my plate and I'm applying um, more color to the sides and half tones and leaving on purpose uh, the highlight untouched so you can see that there is a paper in the center of that Queens that left untouched and I'm moving my brush and uh, removing some extra pigment. Moving to my second Queens fruit and I'm starting the same wet on dry and with my uh, mop brush I'm distributing color on my paper. Um, and I'm using here mostly warmer colors thinking that I'm going to be needing colder colors for highlights for the better contrast so I'm applying now the same colors uh, it's uh, cadmium yellow a little bit of yellow hue and just a little bit of yellow oak so I'm just adding some more of uh, yellowish color using lemon hue uh, to some areas on both of my queens and then I'm thinking of creating colder color using Prussian blue and a little bit of cadmium yellow as you can see on the palette I'm mixing them together and in between them I have this like colder color and I'm applying them uh, to some of the areas of half tones again I'm leaving my highlighted area untouched and I'm sort of blending it together I'm blending a uh, highlighted area and my colder slightly half tone color together and then I'm, a, I'm using a little bit of uh, raw sienna mixing more colors because I'm going to be painting a shadow area now so I'm applying it now and uh, I'm sort of moving my brush here I've changed my brush but it's still I think this one is a six size so slightly bigger uh, this is my really old brush and I love using it because it's it's seen better days but I really love using this brush because uh, I am um, using quite a lot of uh, lifting the pigment technique and this brush is amazing for, for my technique that's why I love using it so much and um, after I applied this uh, raw sienna to my quinces I am pulling the color and blending it together so with uh, lifting the pigment I am uh, watering my brush I'm putting it in my uh, jar washing it and then I'm drying it against tissue and then I am with full body of the brush I'm pulling the paint out of the paper and then I'm washing the brush and then I again apply it to my tissue to dry out and do it again if necessary that's the lifting the pigment technique you can see I 
use quite a lot of lifting pigment technique on this, on my especially on my first layers. Uh, it's very essential to uh, make all the parts of the object seen, all the tonal values seen. So we are now working wet on wet because both quinces are wet and we are adding colors while both of these fruits are still wet. I'm using sap green and adding it to my quinces and also I use just a little bit of yellow pile and you can use a little bit of lemon hue. I even premixed it with my previous mixture which included cadmium yellow hue, a little bit of yellow uh, lemon yellow hue and um, raw sienna. Uh, and I'm applying that, this, these colors to shadow area and highlighted area. I'm allowing them to bleed a little bit. So as you can see, if you squint your eyes, I'm trying to create uh, an object that has volume and shape. So you will see that there are darker areas and highlighted areas and uh, reflected lights, even though it's not really ref uh, refined, looking refined right now. I'm gonna be doing now uh, lifting the pigment technique to blend it all together. So uh, with my brush number six, I'm doing this again and again. <laughs> I would like to add that lifting the pigment and doing it quite a lot is um, not a very good idea with all types of watercolor paper and uh, I would recommend using cold press quite thick watercolor paper for doing so. I wouldn't recommend um, hot press paper for that for, for doing that because uh, after second or third attempt of doing lifting the pigment, paper tends to go bad. So I wouldn't rec I wouldn't recommend using hot pressed uh, for this one because we're going to be doing this a lot in this tutorial. So just to warn you. Here I'm still blending all the tonal values together with my brush using lifting the, uh, lifting the pigment technique and I'm using my number 6 brush and now I'm working on reflected highlights and uh, I am blending it all together as you can see so it will be one nice first layer when I say blending it together, what I mean, I mean, for example, if we have a highlight that barely touched with paint or our brush, I want a slight gradient from a highlight to the half turns and from half turns to shadows and from shadows to reflected lights. That's the idea. So when I say I am blending it together, I mean this. And obviously to uh, blend together a very light area, you need water and you need clean brush to do so. Usually first layer, depending on com complexity of my painting, takes me from one hour to one and a half hours and I want to do the first layer all together and I am usually when I paint uh, the big painting I come back to some details bearing, it my, bearing in my mind that um, I can still work on some areas while uh, they are on um, the stage between wet and damp and I can with using a bit more water prolong this and make it wetter and still carry on working on several sub subjects uh, all together coming from one object to another object coming back so etc 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 so here I'm using the combination of colors of sap green and raw sienna and I'm going over uh, shadow area on my both quinces working wet on wet with my brush size number six and I'm working on 
shadows and half tones and uh, as you can see the parts of the queens are greener and some parts of the queens are yellower it's just a different combination of uh, these two colors raw sienna and sap green so and um, for the yellowish bead I use uh, cadmium yellow sap green and a little bit of raw sienna where for uh, getting that uh, warm green color I use sap green and raw sienna so I'm going over with my brush and I'm lifting the pigment uh, to refine all the areas for the final time for the for our first layer and I'm adding to the darker areas the combination of raw sienna and sap green uh, to make those areas quite dark again it will be darker with other layers but uh, for now it's should be okay so I am gonna be lifting the pigment and I'm doing so in reflected um, where reflected light is and uh, um, in some parts of the bottom of the queens um, and I'm moving to another one it's almost complete so this is my first layer for the queens is done and I will let it dry 100% in that meantime we can start working on our foliage uh, so I'm going to talk through what colors and what color combination we're going to be using in this so let's carry on for foliage I've created a couple of color combinations so for the first one uh, I mixed raw sienna, pines grey and sap green that's a warmer uh, color, warmer green color and for the second one a uh, colder combination I've used Prussian blue plus uh, sap green and pines grey to have this like cold uh, dirty uh, color so we're going to be starting with this color and I'm using my brush size number four and as you can see on my palette this is like really transparent really light mixture of it and I'm starting painting my first leaf and I'm using water and painting wet on dry and with more and more water I am distributing the color uh, in this leaf and I am deciding that uh, right side of the leaf will be lighter so I'm applying more color um, uh, to the leaf that's like it's going to be bending down so it will have a shadowy area so I'm applying just a little bit more color there and spreading it all and I'm still using this one combination for that leaf and then with my water I'm applying it to the highlight of that leaf and I am um, blending it together with my brush and I'm pulling color down to the shadowy area and then using more and more color and I'm adding uh, more of that color in some just 
areas of the leaf towards edges and I'm finally coming uh, to the next stage where I'm adding warmer color combination in that leaf. So I start with another leaf and uh, <clears throat> I'm using the same two color combination to paint it, uh, warmer uh, color combination and uh, colder color combination and as you can see I'm working in between these two leaves adding more color to the shadows and um, just placing some drops of paint and I'm allowing it and leaving them to bleed and then I will come back to them um, and lift the pigment and excess paint so I'm using brush number four from Pro Arte, and while they are still bleeding, I'm letting them do so, and I am moving on to my another leaf on top of my another queens, and I'm starting with a very watery mixture of the colder color, and I'm spreading the color around this leaf, and I'm finally. Uh, started adding a uh, warmer combination, warmer green to my leaf and um, I'm working on a shadowy area and then I'm distributing the paint throughout the main vein, separating the leaf and then painting a stem and moving on to my another leaf and again I'm starting with a um, very transparent mixture Basically I'm doing the same steps that I was doing with painting first layer of these two quinces that I'm using already established by myself uh, color combinations and I am um, sort of mixing the process of applying darker colors and lifting the pigment and that's the way I create the shape of the leaves and uh, it's uh, wet on wet technique and lifting the pigment technique all together so that's how it's done as you can see i'm still using my bigger brush size number four and i'm painting the top leaf and i'm leaving uh, some of the area untouched because this will be uh, the other side of the leaf and it will be painted in slightly different colors so at the moment um, I'm just leaving it that way and I am uh, coming back to my bottom leaves and now while I allowed it to go through to go through the uh, paper I am lifting the pigment and uh, I'm removing some extra paint and I'm making those sort of highlights on the leaf uh, that makes them look glossy and then I'm coming back to the leaf that is on top and so on so for this leaf this leaf is uh, slightly curved uh, over my queens so I'm creating the shape and I'm putting quite a lot of shadow in the area using more and more of uh, both pigment, pigments there uh, and then I am returning to my uh, other leaves and it's sort of how do I, uh, how do I explain it properly um, it's knowing and it comes with experience it's knowing when is the right time to lift this pigment to uh, remove this extra paint and uh, uh, there isn't any easy way of learning it uh, only understanding when your parts of your painting gonna get uh, drier uh, when they're gonna be on the border between uh, really wet and damp or like damp and getting drier so it's work it's understanding when this uh happening to your uh, illustration and working on that area again there are so many ways how you can do it uh, I'm just only sharing how I paint and how uh, you can use watercolor for that purpose and just sharing my knowledge on it uh, you don't have to do it the same way um, it's completely up to you 
Also, a great way of helping yourself with painting is understanding where the source of light comes in. Uh, even if this is like imaginary illustration, so I don't use any references, I still think mm, where the light is coming from, from the left, from the right, from above, what area I want to highlight. And uh, you can do a little sketch for yourself where you are just uh, picturing where the source of light, where all the half tones, uh, reflected light, shadow area are gonna come from, how the leaves are gonna be affected because they're not all turned to that source of uh, light and it really will help you to understand how better and how more realistically uh, paint this. So I would recommend uh, making this little sketch with a source of light. As you can see, I made a slight mistake that I uh, used a little bit of green that went on my queens, but it's not a problem if it's quickly fixed. Uh, again, that side of uh, my queens is uh, on the colder spectrum, that's why I'm just using my brush and I just uh, blend it together so you can't really see anything uh, and it actually worked out nicely. So moving on to my other leaves, as you can see I am uh, painting uh, first layer wet on dry and then using water and watery mixture I am uh, spreading the colour uh, all around the leaf. I'm doing lifting the pigment again and I'm moving from one leaf to another, uh, lifting the pigment and I just love leaving those white lines across leaves, it creates a really nice contrast, creates great tonal values in between, so I just love using this technique a lot. <laughs>
I'm still working wet on wet on all my leaves and uh, I notice that in some areas uh, the darker color sort of doesn't really blend nicely with the lighter area so with my clean brush with a little bit of water I'm making it and I'm mixing my colors and blending them together and then I've pre-mixed uh, another mixture which is colder and I've used Prussian blue with uh, some Payne's grey and I'm just applying it to my really dark shadowy area and I'm not afraid of using this color and uh, so it's, I'm just applying a generous amount and I'm allowing it to bleed And also I'm using here a quite dark but really warm, really earthy uh, combination of colours using Prussian blue mixed with burnt sienna. That combination gives you a really rich uh, warm green colour and I'm applying it to some of the shady area and uh, I applied it to almost all my leaves.
So as you can see, it's like a never-ending process and uh, eventually uh, you will get the satisfaction out of what, you, you, what you've painted and uh, for me, uh, I think yes now my first layer is complete again for you it could be different and you might not want to do so many additions of different layers in one layer lifting the pigment you could be happier with uh, doing less it's uh, still okay absolutely so I let my first layer to dry out 100% so I left it for several hours and now I'm thinking of doing another layer on my quinces. I'm mixing the colors which are cadmium yellow hue uh, mixed with a little bit of Prussian blue and uh, I think there it was uh, sap green and a little bit of burnt sienna so that's uh, kind of my combination and uh, I just want to make uh, my half tones and uh, shadow area more uh, refined and uh, create more contrast in between those uh, areas and I'm using a little bit more of that green color which is uh, made from burnt sienna and Prussian blue uh, that gives me that rich warm uh, green color and I'm just applying it to the bottom of my queens um, allowing it to bleed and I'm sort of painting those uh, little areas on the queens uh, where um, it has like bumps bumps uh, bumps on the queens and I'm not even afraid of using uh, some really dark colors which are made from um, raw amber mixed with burnt sienna so and a little bit of sap green so i'm mixing them together and i'm blending them you see i'm making with my brush uh, lifting the pigment and making reflected light uh, reflected light area Using Prussian blue with cadmium yellow, I'm creating a half tone area on the left side of uh, Queens at the bottom. And after that, I am uh, moving on to my uh, Queens that is on top. And I'm using the same color combination. So I'm using colder combination, which includes a really uh, watery um, Prussian blue with cadmium yellow and I am applying it towards the left side and uh, towards the highlight uh, and I'm using warmer col colors on the right side on the queens and I'm using uh, burnt sienna mixed with raw amber uh, and just a little bit uh, on the side on the left side I'm adding it and then I'm just lifting the pigment and removing the extra paint and also blend them together to form that second layer on my painting.
With my brush size number 6, I am lifting the pigment of the bumps on bottom of the queens. And you can see how I do it and then uh, once I remove them, I am applying more of the warmer color, uh, which is burnt sienna mixed with uh, raw amber. And I'm just distributing this color on my queens and then after I add more I uh, remove the extras, uh, mark the highlights, blend it together and see uh, if all the pigments that I've used on uh, shadow area is blending nicely with the rest of it because if it's a sharp border and it will become drier and you'll see the borders very uh, so the borders are very sharp I'm just with my brush I'm a little bit with a little bit of water I'm blending it together so it's not so uh, untidy looking and then I use my thinner brush and this is the size number zero from Pro Arte. I am uh, going uh, and painting the edges of uh, my queens with uh, adding more green color and uh, this green color is actually Prussian blue mixed with cadmium yellow and I'm just uh, using it and even add it to the bottom to the sides where I think it will look okay and it will create a next contrast and then I'm swapping my palettes as you can see I have two palettes one I used for my quinces so I don't have to you know remember what color combination I use and it really handy and another palette I use for uh, painting foliage and uh, like I said, it's very handy. You remember what colors they are and sometimes if you need a little bit, you can just add a little bit of more water if they dry out and uh, they will come back to life and you can uh, add in those puddles more color and you don't have to wash it. So it's, it's very easy uh, to use. I had my uh, palette that I used for the foliage and it dried out so I premixed again those two mixtures and uh, I've used more pigment in both of them so as you remember the first one it was more diluted more watery one where here I use uh, more of the pigment and less water so uh, which will allow me to uh, create a more colorful more in-depth illustration so I'm using these two color combinations so first warm color combination is burnt sienna paints gray and sap green and for the second combination which will be colder I use quite a lot of a lot of Prussian blue with paints gray and just a little bit of sap green so using my darker combination, I'm still using my brush number 6 from Pan Art. I am separating the leaf and uh, I'm doing it so I am making the line and then with a clean brush, so I put it in the water, I, it's so it's not holding a lot of water, just a little bit and then I'm with fully uh, applying pressure to the brush I'm going and I'm sort of blending it together so uh, all the color that was on that line will bleed on that one side and then uh, I wash my paint I wash my um, brush again and I'm blending it even more that's how you are uh, creating a gradient and here I'm using the same principle so I am painting wet on dry so paper is 100% dry and I'm applying uh, shadow really saturated colors in a shadow area and then I wash my brush and then I am blending it together so I'm applying a little bit of water which allows those uh, that paint on the border to come through and I'm blending it with my uh, highlighted area and then I can take extra with my lifting the pigment technique and then I'm using my clean brush with a little bit of water and I'm applying this water to all the borders of the area so it will be nice one area because if I won't do that uh, actually the paint will dry out and you can see through the borders between this new layer that's why I'm doing it 
If you look on edges of my leaves, you can see that I'm working with a quite big brush and uh, some of the edges and some of the um, yeah, some of the endings of the leaves are not looking so sharp. It's just because that I've used quite big brush and I wasn't worried about them uh, just yet. But I can adjust it and complete it with uh, further layers and they will be darker. And I will be using really tiny brush to uh, to fix that problem. So I'm not so worried, especially like if you look at uh, my painting now on top, there are two leaves and like even three leaves that are looking very rough. But I understand that I can fix it in the process. Uh, and I am carrying on with painting shadowy area and I'm using these two principles that I've just talked to you about with a uh, applying quite dark shadows uh, and really saturated colors to a shadowy area and then with a the cleaner brush you blend in that and you kind of take your leaf into segments where you want to still have uh, half tones and highlights and you are applying these shadows and you separated your, le uh, your leaf into segments and work uh, on every single one of them depending how many you want to have And here I am started to implement uh, an extra color and this is burnt sienna mixed with uh, Prussian blue but here I'm using quite a lot of burnt sienna and just a little bit of Prussian blue to create this warmer um, brown color uh, which will look really nice on a contrast with a really cold green. Uh, so I'm just applying it in some areas and I'm blending it together with my brush.
So I've decided that for each leaf I'm going to separate it into segments, uh, two segments, two sides of the leaf and work separately. Uh, while one part is wet I am working with it and then I am leaving the space like negative space so the lighter uh, vein in between and then I am painting another side of the leaf. While it's still wet on wet, I apply a different color combination that I've discussed uh, earlier. And uh, you can um, use it in your own way. You don't have to repeat uh, uh, the same way I use colors. And if you feel that you want to add uh, more or different color combination to certain parts, feel free to do it. Um, I'm just showing how I do it. And... Um, so I'm moving on to my other leaf uh, and I want quite a saturated colour because this is uh, the most darker part of my painting uh, and I'm just using quite a lot of uh, Prussian blue mixed with Payne's grey and I'm painting that uh, shadowed leaf and then I'm going to be blending it together with my cleaner brush. I've pre-mixed burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of Prussian blue and uh, it has more of the burnt sienna in it uh, and it's time to uh, paint that branch uh, to create this nice warm uh, brown colour. So I'm applying it to uh, three branches on that painting. And I am moving some colors, so I like to do it towards the two objects, so two uh, queens on the bottom and queens on the side. So I use more color and create it a uh, um, highlight in, in, in the middle, so you will see later that I, with my brush, will be pulling some pigment out. 
and then I swap uh, I swap to a smaller size of the brush so I've used Pro Arta size number zero to just reach that extra uh, corners uh, so it will be looking nicely uh, because you you would struggle to use the big brush and you know paint all the corners really nicely and it, I'm even adding just a tiny drops while it's still wet on wet I'm using Prussian blue and quite saturated Prussian blue if you can see on the bottom of my palette uh, I'm just dropping this paint uh, in a shadowy area of the branch. So I allowed all the paint to go through and then with my bigger brush, size number 6, I'm pulling the extra pigment out. And then using smaller brush, size number 0 or 1, you can use. I'm only applying burnt sienna and I'm applying it as like dots. So, and those dots will bleed. And then with bigger brush, I'm collecting the extra again. Also, bear in mind that you ideally need to clean your water every layer or every part that you painting. For example, we've done first layer of Queen's rings. Uh, we've done one layer of uh, foliage, change it. Then we move it to another one, change it. That way you will be um, having really clean and nice colors on your painting. Here I a little bit spe uh, sped up uh, my painting because I'm doing the same process you've seen before, uh, just working on different parts. And uh, for this I'm just using two uh, brushes. One bigger brush for blending and pigment, lifting the pigment is uh, brush number six. Uh, and uh, then I'm using a smaller one for reaching those tiny corners and edges. Uh, brush number zero or one, uh, it could be uh, both. Uh, so and I am uh, working with a smaller brush to paint the line in between leaves and then with a bigger brush I'm blending it together with clean water and then I am adding small extra details using my small brush. So it's the process of where you just uh, quickly working with two brushes. <laughs>
Now, once all the leaves are 100% dry, we can apply one of the last layers. So I'm using my brush size number zero, or it could be thinner, and um, I'm using the same combination, and I am applying them in a way, so I'm using darker pigments and more paints in the area that already is quite shady, and I am applying less or uh, more watery combinations uh, of my paint in the parts that are uh, have highlights or have a half tone, so not they're not so dark. And um, as you can see, I am uh, painting and start painting in different parts of that leaf and I am um, moving to different parts uh, and uh, painting different leaves and also please notice how I uh, paint the movement of my brush that I am not making them like flat they are uh, most of them they are curvy uh, and they uh, repeat the movement on the leaf uh, so that why I paint almost all my leaves and this brush to me is still a little bit big uh, but I'm okay to do this uh, layer before I use my super extra thin brush to make that painting complete. So if you look on my palette I'm using burnt sienna and then burnt sienna mixed with uh, sap green and then on the bottom the color combination uh, of paints grain mixed with Prussian blue and a little bit of sap green. So all the same combination that I've used is just you apply not very saturated uh, colors. Uh, so the idea is with my technique that I like that you will see and notice this brush stroke so they will be slightly darker than the layer underneath so you can see or for example on some highlighted areas you can see just different color just use a light burnt sienna uh, it will look nicely together <laughs>
And now I've swapped to my extra thin brush, size 00, zero and I'm going over that leaf and uh, I'm applying the same principle I've said to you before that in a darker shady areas I use more of the pigment and I still go in over so you can see it through uh, and then on the lighter I use less pigment however I still cover all the areas of my leaves Once I've done uh, some little tiny brush strokes on the leaf, I want my colors to be bolder, so I go again with my tiny brush and more pigment on it, and uh, I'm making and covering my previous brush strokes with more brush strokes that has more pigment in it. And like I said to you in the beginning of this video, that vintage botanical art uh, tend to have really defined uh, tonal values, uh, so uh, they have a lot of contrast in between those areas. So I want uh, to add more and more color uh, to make it darker on a contrast with really light parts of the painting. That's why I am putting more and more brush strokes to reach this effect. With my last layers uh, I want it to be very refined so there is a uh, distance in between my brush strokes, they really stand out and give a lot of nice clear details. So how do I achieve it? Well in my opinion it's easy to do it if you turn canvas and you are making those brush strokes towards you. Um, I mean, it could be different for you, but I find it easier. That's why when I work, I turn my canvas uh, all around and uh, uh, I am very satisfied with the process because I have more control over my hand. This is a little close-up to show how I do my brush strokes as you can notice that I am also with my tiny brush uh, painting the edges of the leaf to make them uh, tidier. With my brush size 00, zero I go over my leaf and I am leaving some of the parts of the leaf blank, which will create a greater contrast. Let's paint the branch. So I'm using my brush size 00 from Pro Arte and I'm using color combination of Burnt Sienna with Purple Lake or you can use Burnt Sienna plus Burnt Amber. It will give you that rich uh, brown saturated color. And I'm going over uh, this little branch and I'm bearing in mind that uh, shadier area are towards both quinces, so in the middle it will be lighter.
Here's just another close-up and I'm going over with my brush number uh, zero zero. It's a, a wet on dry technique and uh, I am using even darker colors. So here I've uh, mixed uh, burnt amber mixed with paint gray or lamp black to give that rich really dark color and I'm just adding it and um, spreading it in, uh, on that branch. I pre-mixed yellow or raw amber and burnt sienna together and with my bigger size brush, I think this one is size number 6, I am painting the bumps um, on the bottom of each quince and I'm spreading the colour and then I am with my clean brush I am blending it together um, what I want to create I want to create even greater contrast in between parts of the quince so you can see really light yellow parts on the left side so I want to create more contrast to give more contrast to the shady area and half tones and also um, highlight those um, really round bits of quince at the bottom of each quince. This is a wet on dry technique so that layer should be 100% dry so I am applying really concentrated color to the shady area and with a clean a wet brush but not too much water in it I am blending it together and then extra paint that it's not blending together I'm just moving it and working in one area to make it smooth to remove all the uh, sharpness in between those layers that on top and underneath if you look on my palette, which is uh, on the right hand side on this video, you will see four active, uh, I mean, watery puddles there. So it's four different combinations that I've used to make my brush strokes to go along uh, my quinces. So on the left hand side on top, there is yellow oak with raw amber. Then the second one that looks uh, a bit reddish is burnt sienna with yellow oak. The third combination in the middle uh, it's a cadmium yellow plus a dash of sap green. And uh, the final one on the right hand side and it looks bluish it's Prussian blue mixed with a little bit of cadmium yellow. So these four colors I've used for my uh, super tiny brush strokes. This is wet on dry technique and I'm using my brush size 00 and I am going using all these four combinations to cover my queens. So for a shadowy area I'm using combination of burnt sienna and yellow oak to give more reassurance that this is a shady area and then uh, in some parts I put it in half tones as well or to um, highlight the bumps uh, on the bottom of each queens I use this combination so for half tones area and mostly shadowy area I'm using burnt sienna and yellow oak and for half tones I'm using yellow oak and raw amber for uh, half tones on the left hand side of the queens I'm using a uh, third combination of Prussian blue and cadmium yellow so it's slightly uh, bluish colors uh, and then uh, cadmium yellow I'm using for the uh, for the areas closer to highlights as you can see that I'm leaving uh, highlighted area almost untouched and uh, I'm using very 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 watery um, brush strokes towards that highlight so they are not saturated in color at all. 
So with my tiny brush and tiny brush strokes, and these are for my final brush strokes, I am uh, refining all the tonal values on this painting, so I'm making sure there is a difference between highlights, half tones, shadow and reflected light areas.
Here's another close-up and um, as you can see here my brush strokes aren't flat, they slightly curve so they repeat the shape on the queens and I am supporting the idea that uh, queens is curvy so uh, I, put, I make sure that I put my brush strokes in that way to support this idea to show the volume and shape of my fruits.
one of the last things that uh, is left is uh, I need to add uh, remains of the uh, stamens at, to the bottom of each quince and I'm using uh, burnt amber mixed with lamp black so they have to be quite dark to be um, on a contrast with the rest of the uh, painting so don't uh, hesitate to use uh, a quite saturated mixture uh, you can use more of a lamp black and just a little bit of burnt amber uh, to cover those uh, shady areas at the bottom of each queens. Now I'm doing wet on dry and I'm using my brush size number 00 to paint those tiny little dark leaves uh, on the bottom of each queen so you need quite a thin brush to make it um, look tidy. The very last part is I'm planning to add those uh, little extra dots on my quinces. So I'm using combination of colors of burnt sienna mixed with purple like or you can uh, use um, purple like mixed with a little bit of uh, burnt amber and I'm uh, using my brush size 00 I'm making those little dots all the way across uh, some parts of both quinces and it's gonna be the last part and now I think that my painting is complete also follow me on patreon to support my work I will be very grateful it will give me opportunity to film new tutorials and create interesting and useful content. I would love to share my knowledge with you. Link to my Patreon in the description below this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment down below, subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Bye!